Inflation is surging out of control. Consumer sentiment is the worst since the 1940s and interest rates are rising. How is this going to affect the price of Bitcoin and altcoins? I'm going to look at both of those. They're actually showing a little bit of a divergence right here. I'm going to look at inflation figures as well. They are absolutely awful. People were expecting these to potentially come down. We're going to look at how these are affecting the real economy and then how this is affecting Bitcoin trade as well. Timestamps for everything uh, down in the description as always. Now, in my previous market update video, I said essentially if inflation is higher than what was expected, the market would dump. That did happen in the stock market. Inflation is just surging out of control. Something has to be done about this. Um, but Bitcoin, yes, Bitcoin did come off. And I said, you know, if that happened, we may see uh, Bitcoin coming down towards, you know, this next support level around 25,000. It's actually held up fairly well. Yes, it did dump off yesterday but it was coming off the back of uh, a little bit of a rally. And for some reason, we are just sticking around this 30,000 level, you know, 28,000, 29,000. You can see this uh, support right here around 28 and a half thousand. For some reason, it's sticking here and not going lower. And um, this is now creating a divergence between Bitcoin and altcoins. Ethereum had been kind of keeping up with Bitcoin. Yes, they've both been going down, but the Bitcoin dominance hadn't been rising as much in as in other bear markets. But you can see a clear divergence here now of Bitcoin during the lunar sell off where it really spiked down to that 25. And now for a period of a few weeks, it is consolidating here um, and really finding a massive area of support around 28 and a half, you know, this level, right? Whereas Ethereum is continuing to sell off. Now, one reason for this could be interest rates. So I'm going to go over that in this video and like interest rate expectations, which are now, um, you know, expecting interest rates to r rise further and for longer to try and battle what is clearly out of control inflation and what is clearly um, going to have to be a very awful recession. It's the only way that this inflation uh, gets sorted. Now, you know, you're going to hear central bankers come out and say, well, the, the economy is fairly strong. You know, we're going to raise rates. We might not get a recession. You know, that's the same as them when they were printing all that money saying that inflation wouldn't happen and is transitory. OK, so it was wrong then. And what they're saying is obviously wrong now. The only way we're going to get through this very terrible um, inflation is by a recession. Um, so that may come earlier or later, but it's obviously going to come. This is a theorem right here. And we've actually got, I think, nine or 10 down weeks in a row. So this is the weekly chart. I put this level on here. This is previous support around 13, 1400. It could very easily come down here. Now, why is this divergence happening? This sell off for Ethereum, but this consolidation for Bitcoin. So Ethereum, a few reasons for this. The first one is Ethereum has a lot more of its value um, as a result of the income that it generates. So if you know about EIP 1559, which is essentially an upgrade to the Ethereum network that directly links its value to how active people are using uh, the chain and paying fees on it. So fees on Ethereum are used for two things. Firstly, for buying back ETH and burning it. So that directly relates fees paid on Ethereum to its price essentially a share buyback. Now, during a recession or during, you know, a crypto winter that this is happening, people use the chain less. And so, you know, less fees are paid. And so less money is can be used to buy back shares or buy back tokens. OK, so less people use it. The, the price is, you know, then they're, they're going to buy back fewer tokens. The second is staking rewards, um, which is coming after the merge. Right. So again, fees are paid and paid out as a dividend to token holders. So the value of ETH is much more closely linked to its usage and fees paid than Bitcoin, which is just uh, really valued as a, a store of value asset, right? And so it's that, that flight to safety. We're seeing that now because of the recession, the inflation, what people think is going to happen to rates. And so you're seeing much higher beta, uh, you know, stocks and, you know, altcoins essentially uh, reacting way more to the potential of higher rates. Now, Bitcoin, People are probably looking at Bitcoin and saying, well, we're going to get a terrible recession. Now, what happens during a recession? Well, the Fed will flip, right? And so they don't need to raise raise rates anymore because the, re the recession will kill inflation. It will also kill the economy. What happens then? Well, they start flipping, lowering rates and printing money again. And so maybe some of that trade, you know, people in Bitcoin are saying, hey, we're going to look six to 12 months out and see the Fed flip. So that's what's happening right now. Now, with Ethereum, 
there's kind of two different ways with this, right? Because yes, you've got rates, you've got rate expectations, and you've got um, you know fewer, less fees being paid, but also you have a lot of altcoins including DAP tokens, who raise money in Ethereum and have Ethereum as part of their treasury to pay themselves you know, th for the development. Now, what they're thinking is, we're seeing a crypto winter. You know, They have uh, P you know, PTSD about previous crypto winters. So they're all just dumping their Ethereum for US dollars or USDC because they need that cash to fund their DAPs and their tokens over the next few years. And so that's what you may be seeing with Ethereum as well, is just this sell-off of, we need to get out because we need to have that money uh you know for our development so yeah interesting eth had you know kept up a little bit with bitcoin but that's just not happening anymore here's the inflation really surprising so in april inflation for some sectors started coming down and in may it's up again and this isn't good news because if you can see uh the price of oil is going ever higher right so at what point does inflation start coming down? Because oil is really the thing that sparks inflation in most other sectors as well, including food because of transportation costs and everything like that. Oil isn't coming down. Oil is going up further than this. This is kind of really bad news, right? So what we can see here is food, uh, all items, is rising faster. Not just rising, it's rising at a faster pace. This is really terrible news for the economy. So you know, 1.2 in May. Then we get energy, energy and commodities up 3.9. But look at this, uh, fuel oil up 16.9. This is absolutely insane. So really there's two things happening here. The first, and the market sells off for two reasons. Firstly is because they say, well, inflation is so high that the Fed is just gonna have to raise rates higher and longer. And that means everything gets tighter. Uh, businesses can't borrow, right? So fears are of a recession. The second thing is inflation is so high right here and oil is so high that just completely separate of the Fed, when oil gets above a certain point, the, the demand gets, you know, absolutely cratered, right? People, we, we all look at the price of oil, we fill up our cars, we look at the price of food, and we just choose not to participate in the economy anymore. Okay, we pull back all of our spending. And that obviously feeds through to other companies, retail, everything like that. So it's not just the Fed, the market now thinks, well, the Fed is going to have to tighten. It is the whole economy looks at this and just says, we're out, okay, we're not going to spend. And so that's when you get these really terrible, um, you know, very sharp recessions. So oil, it can go up, inflation is going to remain high, but at some point demand is going to flick, you know, flick the other way. Um, and so that's what the market is, is pricing in now because the market looks six to 12 months ahead. And so it's looking ahead and saying retail just can't keep up with this inflation. There's going to be a recession at some point. So central bankers will say that they can navigate through this and they'll have a soft landing. That's absolutely not, not the case. Okay, this, These are the worst figures in generations. This, these are the worst figures since the Great Depression in terms of how much stocks have come off. And so if anyone's thinking that this won't be kind of a bad recession, I just don't see how. On the inflation figures yesterday, here's what we got, this huge spike in the 10-year Treasury in the States. This obviously shows us here, we were hovering around this 3% level, inflation very high, it means the Fed has to raise rates higher, or at least do 50, 50, 50 at the next three meetings. And so you saw this big spike in rates right here. So the market is doing its job here saying inflation's too high, we're going to raise rates again. So, you know, again, this just sparks fears of a recession and a slowdown in the economy. It's a really complex picture because obviously if the economy falls, you wouldn't expect altcoins to do well. But obviously at some point when rates start contracting again, they may start to pump as, uh, you know, in, essentially they are a derivative of uh, what rates are. So you can see here real average hourly earnings for all employees decreased. So people are getting poorer, right? Um, uh, you know, inflation is high. Wages are going up to try and meet that but not as much as inflation. So people are getting poorer right now, and this is what inflation does. This is why you need to keep it down. Rate expectations at the next meeting, 50 basis points hike in the States for the next meeting. The one after that, 50 basis points again. People are starting to move out to think, should they raise 75 basis points? And then in September, a lot of the market was thinking 25 basis points move, but what you're seeing is way more people now actually enter this area, which is another, which is a third 50 basis points. So recession, you know, that's what they're really looking at. Now, interesting here, like 
is um, mortgage applications in the States. And this is important as well because we look at Bitcoin and crypto, but essentially most people's wealth is stored in their house. And so this is where inflation, you know, really comes from as well in terms of house prices and, and rents as well. So what you can see is actually this starting to decline, right? So home purchase mortgage applications uh, way down from the top. This is actually, you know, not great news for everyone, but in terms of the markets, crypto, Bitcoin, this coming down is sh is eventually showing signs of well maybe the economy is starting to just slow down a little bit and that may feed through to the inflation figures over the next few months which may settle the markets a little bit in terms of their prices in terms of how strong the fed has to be so really if you're trading btc or all coins right now you're trading macro right so like stanley Druckenmiller says i want to highlight this i think we're at six months into a bear market for those tactically trading it's possible the first leg of that has ended but I think it's highly, highly probable that the bear market has a ways to run. I think we can all agree with that. On a soft or hard landing, if you're predicting a soft landing, it's going against decades of history. So really it's just how bad is the recession gonna be and how bad is it gonna get before the Fed starts to flip again? Um, so that could be a very short, sharp shock, or it could be a, you know, a period of six months or so where it's just kind of worse and worse and worse. And then eventually everyone's just beaten into submission and then they can start lowering rates again to try and stimulate the economy. But inflation is the thing you have to look at if you're looking at can altcoins and Bitcoin move up again, not until inflation is uh, sorted out. Um, so I'll leave the link to Bybit in the description. If you want to trade, they'll give you a deposit bonus if you sign up. Also, the Crypto Investor course is getting updated this month, like 25, 30 new videos there with options, futures, and some other trading uh, tutorials and videos as well. So I'll leave that link in the description as well. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.